Now we're on to video three. This is where we are going to utilize Nessus to scan our OWASP machine. So we already used Nessus before, so this should be a refresher. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start Nessus. And if you remember, you type etc inet.d Nessus D and then start. So Nessus is now started. I'm going to open Ice Weasel. And I'm going to connect to localhost 8834. And wait for that to come up. While that's going on, I'm going to start my OWASP machine. Get that started so it's ready. Nessus takes a while to start. You have to wait for the plugins to download, initialize, and be configured. So it takes a little while. Be patient. All this hard work will pay off. I promise. So what we're going to do is we're going to log into Nessus as eForensics and with a password of Armitage. And if we spelled it correctly, we should be logged in. So let's get started. We're going to create a new scan. And this time we're going to do a web scan. So we're going to scroll down to Web Application Test. OWASP web scan and we're going to utilize the eForensics folder and we're going to type in the IP address I have over here 192.168.174.132 so 192.168.174.132 132 and we'll look at the, some of the options here click on discovery we're going to use the common ports get assessment we're going to scan for all web vulnerabilities quick here's your other options your report make no changes there and it finally advanced we're going to do default scan type you can do a low bandwidth link if you have limitations that way but since we're doing everything internally uh, we should not have an issue so I'm going to click on save And we should see make this a little bigger. A wasp web scan. So let's launch it. Now we've seen the green arrow going round and round, showing that it's running. If we click on OWASP web scan, you can actually see what's going on. If 
this time it's found one medium vulnerability and 16 informational. Let's take a look at some of the informational while we're here. So we have Nessa SIN scanner. So if you click on info there, so it runs a half open port scanner, reasonably quick, even against the firewall target. Port 22 TCP was found to be open. We go back to vulnerabilities. Windows SMB service detection. Shows an SMB server is running on port 139 and port 445. A CIF server, a CIF server is running on this port 445. IMAP service banner retrieval. Shows that an IMAP server is installed and running. Samba server detection. Remote host is running Samba, a CIFS SMB server for Linux, port 445. Look at service detection. We found an SSH server running on port 22, an IMAP server running on port 143. TLS version 1 server running on port 443, a web server is running on port 443, web server is running on port 80, port 80, 80, 80, and port 8081. These are just informational. Let's look at web server directory enumeration. plugin attempts to determine the presence of various common directories on the remote web server. Sends a request for a directory. The web server response code indicates that it's a valid directory or not. So it found CGI bin, test, icons, images, JavaScript, Ostas, Joomla, PHP, BB2, PHP, MyAdmin, and WordPress. And it just kind of shows you what it found on each of the ports. So there's a lot of information you can get just from the informational. Alert, open SSL detection, click on that. Let's get back to vulnerabilities. As we can see, the vulnerabilities are climbing. It's up to 39 at this point. Shows the IP address that's scanning, the MAC address, and the start time of when the scan began. If we look over here, we see that 23% are medium, 8% are low, and 69% are informational at this point. Starting to see a lot of SSL, SSH, TLS, SSL version three, SSL version two and three, self-signed certificate, SMB signing disabled, we go back, It scans. We see that it's only 10% done. Again, this was going to take a while. So let's just kind of watch it for a while and see, see how the numbers come up.
the first two modules are all about gathering information. And then in module three, we're going to basically make use of some of the information that we've gathered to start to exploit our systems. And finally, in module four, I'm going to show you the easy way. So module three will be the hard way and module four will be the easy way. So it'll be a lot of fun. Just realize that it's hard work and that um, it takes time. Uh, a lot of this stuff isn't done quickly. Uh, hackers take their time and are very patient. And, you know, they're, they're searching for specific things. Um, they may not do a complete vulnerability scan like this, but they may be scanning for something very specific that they're looking for as, a, as far as a vulnerability, which they have the capabilities to exploit. So you have to think like a hacker. We're only at 10%. So this may take a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and come back when the scan is complete. So I would walk away from it for a while, come back to it, um, maybe 30 minutes, and um, we'll take it from there. Talk to you soon. Welcome back. So here we are back at the OWASP web scan. So we now have, have our check mark showing that it's completed. Click on OWASP web scan. And we have a large number of vulnerabilities. Two critical, 12 high, 49 medium, eight low, and 120 informational. If we click on the vulnerability bar, and we see we have two critical, one with Apache Tomcat Manager, one on supported Unix operating system. So various web-based vulnerabilities, which we were looking for. More Apache, PHP, cross-site scripting. SQL backend identification, cookie injection scripting, cross-site scripting, SSL, TLS, and a large number of informational hits. So that is basically it for module two. Now with all the hard work that we've done thus far, let's pat ourselves on the back and really be happy about all the hard work we've done. We now have multiple scan files that we can look at to mount our attacks. We will start doing that in module three. So I hope to see you there soon. That'll be the end of this video.